Regina Sanchez here, your spiritual life and health coach. Welcome to my podcast, giving you a fresh start. My heart is to help you revive the joy in your life, rejuvenate your God-given destiny, and restore your body to health. Grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or a glass of spring water with a splash of lemon and sit back. Take notes if you can, and enjoy the teaching I'm about to embark on. Let's get started giving you a fresh start. Welcome, friends, to my podcast, Giving You a Fresh Start After Divorce. Knowing that we can have a fresh start after something that is so traumatic as a divorce should give you hope and encouragement. That's the mission of my podcasts. I know what life is like to live in hopelessness. I did for many, many years of my life. And I wish I had someone to let me know that I didn't need to accept that. And I truly didn't need to reside there. So let's get started with this teaching on Isaiah 54. This is my favorite book of the Bible. And Isaiah 54 is my favorite chapter. Uh, This chapter is how I kept stable during my divorce. And I just want to impart that breath of life to you as well. So grab a cup of tea or coffee or your favorite cold beverage and sit back and open your heart to hear God's truth. And I'm going to start by reading uh, verses 4 through 17 of Isaiah 54. Not that the whole chapter isn't worth reading, but for what I'm about to teach, I'm going to just start in verse 4. So here we go. Get ready. Fear not. For you shall not be ashamed, neither be confounded and depressed. For you shall not be put to shame. For you shall forget the shame of your youth, and you shall not seriously remember the reproach of your widowhood any more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit and heart sore, even a wife wooed and won in youth when she is later refused and scorned, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion and mercy I will gather you to me again. In a little burst of wrath I hid my face from you for a moment. But with age, enduring love and kindness, I will have compassion and mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the water of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I will not be angry with you or rebuke you. For though the mountains should depart and the hills be shaken or removed, Yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace and completeness be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O you afflicted city, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in fair colors, in antimony to enhance their brilliance and lay your foundations with sapphires. And I will make your windows and pinnacles of sparkling agates or rubies and your gates of shining carbuncles and all your walls of your enclosures of precious stones. And all of your spiritual children shall be disciples taught by the Lord and obedient to his will. And great shall be the peace and undisturbed composure of your children. You shall establish yourself in righteousness, rightness in conformity with God's will and order. And you shall be far from even the thought of oppression or destruction. For you shall not fear, and from terror for you shall, for it shall not come near you. And behold, they may gather together and stir up strife, but it's not from me. Whoever stirs up strife against you shall fall and surrender to you. Behold, I have created the smith who blows on the fires of coals and who produces a weapon for its purpose 
and I have created the devastator to destroy. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall show to be in the wrong. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced. This is the righteousness or the vindication which they obtain from me. This is that which I impart to them as their justification, says the Lord. And that again is Isaiah 54 verses 4 through 17 from the Amplified, Amplified Bible. And these verses, my friends, are the foundation of this study and the, the really the foundation of giving you a fresh start after divorce. And I pray that you will receive and believe that these words are life for you. They are life for you. And what does it mean when I say they are life for you? Well, in Hebrews 4.12 in the Passion Translation, it says this, For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of your being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. And then the Bible also says that in the beginning, before all time, was the Word of God. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that is John 1, uh, the first chapter of John, verses 1 through 4. I just love those truths. The word was with God. The word was God. And it manifested on this earth through Jesus. The word became a being. It became life. It became Jesus. Bottom line, Jesus is the word manifested in the flesh. So the words that we find in the Bible, especially those spoken by Jesus, are life. They're real. They are sharper than any two-edged sword. And they can divide through anything that is in your life, hindering your success, your health, or your victory. The word became life. I just want to say that again because I want I want us to really get this. I want you to get this. The word is life. It's truth. It's it's alive. It's not just, you know, some letters, you know, on a page put together. It's life. How does the word divide? Well, first God speaks the word. Okay, so it's a sword. The word of God is a sword, right? That's what we go back into Hebrews 4.12, where it says, For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. Okay, so how, how is that a sword? Let me explain. So we have God's word in the Bible, and we read it, okay? We read the word of God. That's one side of the sword. When we agree and we speak the same word, it gives the sword the other side and it then becomes a two-edged sword. So then it can divide and it can penetrate through our situation. So you read something in the Bible, then you speak it and you pray it out and you thank the Lord for the, the truth of that word. You then have a sword that you can use to penetrate your situation. So as we move forward, I want to take each verse from the scripture of Isaiah 54 that I read to you, and I'm going to impart how the Father wants to speak to you, and frankly, how he spoke to me through these verses. And I want to impart that life to you. I want to give you encouragement. 
and courage to, to continue moving forward if you are in the midst of a divorce or if you are about to enter in or if you are at the you know end of it, but you're feeling like the battle was so strong that you are just worn out. I want to impart truth to you in those scriptures. Kisses from your king. What is that kiss that I want to impart to you today? Well, I had to go back to Isaiah because, oh, like I said, I just have so much truth coming from Isaiah for, for myself. So this is Isaiah 41, verses 10 through 13. And it says, fear not. There is nothing to fear for I'm with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. And behold, all they who are enraged and inflamed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. And they who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. And you shall seek those who contend with you, but shall not find them. And they who war against you shall be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, I hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, fear not, I will help you. Whew, friends, that is such a beautiful promise. A beautiful, beautiful promise. So what I want you to do as a reminder always, below each podcast is the study guide for this specific teaching. So go below and download that study guide. And this particular study guide is kind of in two parts. So the first part is I would like you to read each of the verses above from Isaiah 54. And I want you to write what each verse might be speaking to you. I don't want you to overanalyze or feel like you need to get it right. Just whatever comes to your heart, write it down. If anger comes, write it down. Whatever comes, write it down. Then the second part is I want you to take the kisses from your king and I want you to write about what you are sensing from the Father, from that scripture. And is it hard for you to re, you know, receive the words of truth? Well, then write about that, whatever, whatever you may be struggling with. Or maybe there's joy in you right now. Write it down. Just be honest with yourself. And if you still have fear, write about it. Then ask the Father to forgive you for walking in that fear and receive his forgiveness. Because fear and worry and all of that, you know, letting anxiety and fear and worry take root in your heart. It's a sin. It's not what he wants. He commands us to not, to not go there. So if you do, and we all do from time to time, just ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you because he forgives every single time we ask. Even if you ask for forgiveness for the same thing over and over again. So spend some time here. And then as we move forward in these teachings, I'm going to break down each of these verses and I'm going to share with you what I believe the Father, <clears throat> excuse me, spoke to me and what he wants to speak to you. Friends, the adventure to, truly is beginning. So take heart, be encouraged, know that you are loved, that the Father loves you and that I love you. And I'm so grateful that you took the time to listen to this teaching. Now be blessed, be encouraged, go download that PDF and let the adventure begin in your life. Thanks for listening. Have a beautiful day. God bless. Well, thank you, my friends, for taking the time to listen to my podcast. I hope you found it uplifting and encouraging and that it guides you to having peace, joy, love, and health in your life. If you would like more information on the services I offer, go to my website, reginasanchez.com. Or if you're ready to dive into my teachings, 
head on over to givingyouafreshstart.com. This is where I will teach you how to start fresh on different aspects of your life. You can also find my book, Can I Have Your Heart, Daddy, on Amazon. Be blessed, be encouraged, and know that you are loved.